All right, so now let's go ahead and talk about how we can delete a particular reminder. Jump into reminder list view. Now, one of the things that you will see in the reminder list view is that we have commented out the preview section. And that's the main reason that we cannot really see the preview. Let's go ahead and check out the preview. Well, we can definitely see the preview section over here. It's popping out. But now it is complaining that you can't really preview a reminder list view because in the reminder list view, you need to pass in something called a fetch results. We don't really have a fetch results over here. If you scroll up, you can see that the fetch results were being passed to the reminder list view. One way to create fetch results is to use the fetch request property wrapper. But the problem is that where are you going to create that property wrapper? You might try to create a fetch request property wrapper over here, but you may not be able to access it correctly inside your application. Let's go ahead and try this out. If I go ahead and create a very simple property wrapper, which is just going to give me all the different reviews, then I can just use this part. And I can try to pass in the reminder results. But this is really not going to work because the reminder results is an instance member and it cannot be used inside over here. So what are the different options that I can choose in this point? One of the options that I can do is I can probably create some sort of a container view. So let's go ahead and create a container view. I'll call it reminder list view container. You can see that I'm creating this container view inside the previews because I don't really want anyone to access it. Uh, you can even try to make it like a private or something to make it more restricted. But right now we're just creating a container view which is of type of view. Now we can go ahead and implement body. And in the body, we can implement the reminder list view, which is based on the reminders. Once again, we are facing the same issue. We need to pass in the reminders. But this time we are inside the reminder list view. This means that we can go ahead and create our fetch request if we wish to. And now we can simply pass it, reminder results. And finally, instead of previewing the reminder list view, we can go ahead and preview the reminder list container. Just make sure that you pass in the environment for the manage object context. And this will be coming from the core data provider dot shared dot view context. Perfect. Now let's go ahead and see what it looks like. You can see that we can definitely see all the reminders that are available. So we are easily able to preview our application and all the reminders. The other thing that we want to do is to delete. Right now, if I swipe from right to left, you can see that the delete button is not really appearing. If we simply go ahead and change the list to for each, then the for each is going to allow us to delete. But make sure that you still wrap it with the list because that is going to give you a nice display. There we go. And the for each modifier or the for each operation does actually provide you with the on delete function. We can go ahead and call delete reminder. Now delete reminder obviously does not exist. So let's go ahead and create that. Delete reminder and we are going to get index set index set now when we're deleting a reminder we will go ahead and go through each of this index set so all of them in our case it will be only one anyways but we'll go through all of them we will get the reminder which is at reminders at index position once we have that, now we can eventually call reminder service dot delete reminder, which again does not exist, passing in the reminder. If there's a problem, 
we're going to go ahead and catch it and display the error. But currently, we don't really have anything called delete reminder. So let's go ahead and jump into reminder service and implement delete reminder. Delete reminder is actually quite simple. Let's go ahead and implement this static function delete reminder. You will pass in the reminder, which will be a reminder. View context dot delete the object. Now it is only deleted from the context itself, so we still have to save it. So let's go ahead and save it. And make sure that we say throws because the save function can actually cause error. And since we're deleting it, uh, we don't really need to be providing a label. I mean, if you want to, you can, but that should be okay. And that is pretty much it. Let's go back to our list view. Looks like it's all fine. And we will go ahead and see if we can delete something. So I'm going to go back to my home view and start from here. Blue list, I can see three reminders. Reminder number four, deleted go back, go forward, reminder number four is not there. This means reminder number four has been deleted successfully. This is great, and we have made a good progress. But keep in mind that our the home page still is very much incomplete. We're still missing a search part on the top. We are still missing some statistics, like how many completed reminders do we have, how many today reminders do we have, how many uh, you know, schedule reminders do we have in all of them? This will be the all part. And also the search. So in the next section, we will be looking at how to add the search and also how to add these statistics, which is going to show us a overview of our reminder application. If you want to learn more about iOS development topics and elevate and accelerate your career, then check out azamsharp.school. This is one of the largest catalogs for iOS development videos. So if you take a look at all these courses, including the MVVM design pattern, you have core data course, full stack iOS development course with Vapor, and we have reactive programming, test event development, UI kit, mastering, SIF UI map kit, reality kit fundamentals, machine learning, and much, much more. So you can get these courses for their individual pricing, as you can see, or what most people do is they sign up for a monthly Adam Sharp Pro membership account, which gives you access to the 22 plus courses because I'm always working on new courses. It is around like 130 hours of content. You get digital books, downloadable resources, and much, much more. Now, apart from the courses, I also host workshops. Now, these are live online workshops hosted on Zoom, and you get two to three hours of content in this live workshop. And you can see that I have a lot of workshops which are scheduled for the future, like March 23rd, we're gonna have a workshop on server-side Swift. I mean, if you want to become a full-stack developer, you need to learn server side. You cannot rely on the other third party platform. You need to learn those things. And if you want to stay in Swift and iOS, then Vapor is the best framework. So in this workshop, we'll be going over Vapor. Uh, you know, we'll learn about the routing. We'll learn about MVC design pattern, database integration, and even consuming our API from our application. And look at the pricing, only $50 for a live workshop that's gonna be very hands-on. I do have other workshops like Swift Data Fundamentals, and I have another workshop for testing. So definitely check out these workshops. These are going to be amazing, and I always get like really good reviews for the workshops. So that's it. Check out adamsharp.school for all of your iOS development needs. Thank you so much.